Hello, you found me, excellent. My name's Beverly Hills and welcome to Storytime Online. Here in my tree house of tales, you can listen to stories from World Book Day's 2011 special one pound books. Your World Book Day token, if you have one, is a ticket to a world of imagination and adventure. Take one to a bookshop today and try for yourself. I've got some amazing stories lined up for you, so let's see who's waiting in the treehouse to read to us. <laughs> Mr. Glenn Murphy wrote a very funny book called Why Is Snot Green? <laughs> Guess what his next book's called? I love it. Do Bugs Have Bottoms? And it's read by... <gasps> Who is that lovely lady? <gasps> it's me! <laughs> Do Bugs Have Bottoms? Yes, they do, albeit very small, bug-sized ones. All but the very oldest and simplest animal species have bottoms. As far as Mother Nature is concerned, if you have a mouth, you need a... Bottom. Mm. Any other arrangement would be a recipe for disaster. Disaster? Why? Well, think about it. What are mouths and bottoms actually for? Eating food and uh, getting rid of it. Exactly. So if you were an animal with a mouth but no bottom, would you like swell up and explode or something? Hmm, sort of, yes. Keep cramming food into a tube with only one open end and eventually the food will either spill back out of the top or the tube itself will split apart. Once food and water has passed into your stomach, fleshy valves prevent it moving back in there from the guts or the intestines further down. So, without an exit for your digested food and body wastes, poo would pile up in your intestines until the gut wall burst or split or you vomited. You vomited it back up. And yes, that does happen allowing the bacteria from your gut to infect and poison your insides. Ouch! Yeah. So you see, bottoms are really rather important, which is why almost all animals, including bugs, have them. Almost all. So few animals don't have mouths or bottoms. That's right. While the vast majority of animal species do have separate mouths, bottom and food tubes, the simplest and most ancient animal families on the planet do not. These include sponges, starfish, jellyfish and anemones. Some of these animals have no mouth and bottom at all, and others lack a separate mouth and bottom. Hey, what does that mean? It means that they have their mouths and their bottoms in the same place using the same single <clears throat> opening for both purposes. So I guess you could say they have a, a bouth <laughs> or a bottom. Yuck, gross. You asked. But why is it only the oldest animal types that have no proper bottom? Ah, because just like eyes, arms, legs and everything else, mouths, bottoms and digestive systems have evolved in the animal kingdom. Before the animals came bacteria and other tiny single-celled creatures like amoebas. When you're only one cell wide, it's simple enough to absorb nutrients from the water or air around you and immediately put them to use inside your body. This is called intracellular or inside cell digestion and all single cell life forms do it. But if you've evolved into something a bit more complex, a, a multi-celled animal like a sponge, a flatworm, a fish or ferret, then things are a little different. Now you're going to need ways of getting nutrients from outside of your body to the bits deeper inside to the hungry organs buried beneath layer upon layer of body cells and tissues. 
Sponges, the simplest multi-celled animals, get around this with lots of little channels or cavities in their bodies, which allow tiny nutrient molecules from the water around them to pass deep into their bodies. Once inside these digestive cavities, the nutrients are absorbed and digested inside the cells, much as they are in bacteria. So do jellyfish and starfish have these cavities too? Jellyfish and starfish and anemones go one better. Since they have to eat larger food morsels like uh, plankton, crabs and small fish, they have a digestive duffel. This is a bag. It's a big fleshy bag inside their bodies within which their prey is broken down by acid and digestive juices. This done, they absorb the nutrients and allow the rest to fall out, along with any other wastes from their bodies. So the opening to the digestive duffel, usually surrounded by arms or tentacles, works as both a mouth and a bottom. And you could say it either has both or neither. Ah, now I get it. So what was the first animal with a mouth and a bottom? You know, in two different places, separate. Hmm. That would have to be something like a flatworm. Active complex animals like worms, crustaceans and insects were the first animals on the planet to evolve a food tube, otherwise known as a digestive tract. In worms, this tract is just a, a simple tube running from an opening at the head end to the mouth and then exit at the back, the bottom. In prawns, lobsters and crayfish, it's this tube that runs along the back of the animal where you'd expect the spine to be. This is often mistaken for a blood vessel or a vein. And when chefs chop them out to make seafood taste better, they say the prawn or the shrimp has been deveined. Well, they're quite wrong, of course. It's not a vein at all. It's the digestive tract filled with fishy, smelly prawn poo. Ugh. Like all invertebrates, these animals have no backbones and their guts run down their back or, or dorsal side. Invertebrates, animals with backbones, the digestive tract runs along the belly rather than the back. Newts, frogs, cats, dogs, hippos, horses, humans and other vertebrates have food tubes that are up to 10 times longer than their bodies, coiled up inside to save space. These super long guts give more surface area for absorbing nutrients and have specialised pouches and organs for storing food and making digestive juices. <laughs> This allows vertebrates to eat larger chunks of food at once, to digest together food sources and to survive for longer periods without eating. So worms, prawns, bugs, snakes, spiders and frogs all have bottoms too? Correct. One more question then. Hmm? What's that? What does bug poo look like? <laughs> well, uh, a bit like ours, only much smaller. 